high developers, subscribers and friends. Thanks for watching my videos. For today I prepared a short video about what I learned by developing Amplify UI for one small eShop application. And obviously I'm using Amplify UI, uh, React, Figma, DynamoDB, Store, Function, whatever else. Um, the big question is if it's feasible to develop the application with Amplify UI and how much it will cost? Yeah, to answer these questions... Uh, <laughs> So I cannot answer the question right now because I'm not finished yet, but I can give you some hints and lessons learned what I learned um, in the course of developing uh, parts of the application. So first things first. So um, a very good um, component of Amplify UI is the form or form builder. So you basically can create new forms from JSON or from the data model which you defined. So I'm heavily using this. But there are some downsides, obviously. So you can create the form, and in the past you had troubles that you can, um, like, only use uh, for the for the string fields only text area, uh, only text field, not the text area. Right now it works. I don't know why. Maybe they changed something. Um, this is good, but what should uh, the improve is for the fields which are not mappable uh, or um, um, that cannot be intergenerated into the UI forms. Maybe they should consider adding something like a wrapper or slot component. Obviously, you can do this from the code by using um, children component, but maybe that's not so nice. Otherwise, are very uh, like these forms because you don't need to use some third-party library just for the forms, but you can leverage something which comes from the UI library. Nice. Second problem which I observed or is maybe not working 100% as it should be, is when you have a kind of a collection, whatever collection, and you want to sort or use the sorting from, <laughs> from the UI or even from the code um, to override the sorting. This is somehow not working for the AVS dates, yeah? It is not really sorting uh, it descending or ascending. Most probably something is not correct under the hood. Third one and the most important one and which is a very, very big benefit is I think uh, the usage of a data model, um, uh, which is basically under the hood, some upsync or GraphQL uh, schema, if you like and that's a very powerful feature mm, but some stuff obviously isn't working there for example i'm not using any relations between the uh, tables because that is causing some troubles with the generation of the code and sometimes i have errors which cannot be fixed and the only fix basically is then to remove the relationships yeah but data model and especially on the front end, uh, the local store which you have um, by using the, the, the data store basically, then this is something which you want to use. Because then you don't need to use some third party stuff like Redux or whatever. You have really a offline store component which you can use everywhere and works. And something uh, which you maybe don't know, but if you, for example, use a REST API, uh, you create your new REST API and you use some Lambda function, then you should uh, know that there are some limits. For example, 29 seconds limit in the in the amplifier uh, <laughs> in the in the AVS uh, gateway API and as well, um, you need to return a proper JSON object back, which means that you need to return the status code 200 and somebody. Otherwise, you will end up with 502 errors or something like that. And don't forget as well to deal with the headers, 
like for the course control, otherwise you will end up with some other error. Other than that, you obviously can use async or sync uh, invocations for the functions and a lot of other fancy stuff. Sometimes I'm having some uh, crazy synchronization errors. The only thing which helps there is basically in IDEA or your like, uh, local environment, just delete everything what was generated by Amplify, like the whole Amplify folder, and then pull back all of this setup, all of this code, and voila, then it works. And maybe at the end, some of the <laughs> third-party libraries which I use uh, and I were to mention is a React Big Calendar for calendars and um, basically if you want to schedule the bookings, date time picker, a fancy date time picker, not the standard one, React Wheel for HTML um, editable fields like text area or text field, um, Rotor for routing, and Toastify for nice toast, uh, which are very user friendly. Other than that, what I can recommend is the new training, which uh, Avias created, and it's uh, called Avias Serverized Digital Learning Badges or Learning Training, whatever you call it. And uh, it gets you a bit deeper into the serverless, uh, how, how to configure this, what are the limits, um, how you can automate stuff, and, 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 and. And at the end, you can um, do the test and get a badge. Up to you. But the idea is that you can learn more, I think, than in the trainings which I already had. There are also some nice videos from Rainvent uh, on the same topic. And you can obviously also follow their blog, their channel. And So thank you for watching. Uh, hope you liked the video. If yes, please continue. Uh, to watch my video, subscribe, like, whatever you like. And uh, in the upcoming videos, I most probably will cover some other topics related to the cloud or some other technologies. Thanks and bye.